Hello, this is part 8 of the Dragobem series and today we will be looking at just exporting. So, so far we've been animating very simple animations, just bones, no, simple animations in Dragon Bones, but we haven't actually exported any of these animations to use anywhere. And the two types of animations of exports uh, we'll be looking at on this um, tutorial will be either frames, um, sequ uh, sequence of frames to use in either um, traditional 2D animation, film or whatever, or in old school games where we import frames, animations, all the different cycles we worked on. And the second way we're going to look at exporting is JSON files, which is used to import the animations and the assets into game engines like Unity. So on screen right now, I have the little Viking we worked on. And if I go to the animation side of um, Dragon Bones, we can see here at the bottom all the different little animations we had made. We had idle, let's check them one more time, arm, idle armed, idle attack, idle saw draw, idle saw sheath, walk, walk arm and walk attack. Okay, maybe it's a little bit different from the previous episode because I did a little work on it, but um, you get the picture. So, mm, I've got a bit burpy, I don't know why. Now, let's have a look at how we can export stuff. So we have our, I'm just checking up, I'm checking everything. We have here the animations, the amateur, right, it's all in place. The frames are 30 frames a second, we need to know that. So we can go up here, there's a little icon up here on top somewhere. Is it this? This is preview. This is export project and import. So we can either go to file and hit export. And a little export panel opens up, a little window. We have three little tabs on the top. One is called animation da data and texture. The other one's called image and the third's HTML. HTML I will not be looking at. It's something I do not um, work with, so I really don't have much knowledge in this, so I'm not going to try and pretend I know something. Animation data and texture. This one, we have target animation, so what are we going to export? So the armature, there it is. Um, what is the type? It's JSON, or JSON, uh, Dragonbones JSON, Dragonbones binary, and some other ones. Um, what version? 5.5, go with the last one. We see it the texture atlas or just images. So you can export either all the images used for the our little uh, Viking separately, or it makes what is called a texture atlas. And this actually we can have a few settings like do we want it to be power of two and auto size? Do we want it to be square? Um, have a background color or not? Um, padding means what's the um, distance between all the assets. I mean, how many pixels I put a bigger number and best fit area and all that. It's just defining how you want your texture, your Atlas map to be exported. I'll just cancel that now. So, because this is what we import into a game engine. We don't import frames or assets, we just, have, we just have this and all the animations we made and the game engine knows right away how to set up quickly the skeleton we did, uh, you know, the bone, the hierarchy for the Viking and quickly add each part of this atlas map to the equivalent bone and start working on it. We'll see it towards the end of the video. Of course, we can look at the output scale. There's a reason for this, and I'll show this soon why I'm going to actually scale this down to 50% because I did, miss, I did not set up the Viking properly. Um, transparent color, do you want it or do you want to have a custom background? Do you, do, do you not want to be transparent? 99% we do want to because we want to have our character um, superimposed on top of an environment and exactly where we're going to export it. Second tab is image. Now this one is we can export either just one single, single frame and what format, PNG, JPEG or, or GIF, we, don't, we won't look at that. So it's either PNG to be, you know, have transparency or GIF if you want, to, or JPEG if you want to have a solid background, what color do you want it to be? We're going with PNG. Um, we, and we're actually going to go with sequences. We're going to export the full animations frame by frame. We also look at which one, what we're going to export. Right now it's on current. So because I've um, selected, I've got walk attack here highlighted, that's what's going to be exported. And you can see down here at the bottom, it's going to be armature walk attack. But you, could, you can have all. And 
and even the default animation uh, I mean whatever zero here whatever this is called um, we don't want that or you go to custom and choose which ones you want to export you turn it off you can only have two or three or maybe you come back later and redo one of the animations and just export that specific one or, or a few of them so I'm going to go with custom which is uh, first select all then go to custom and turn off that one so we want I want to export all of these and if I go hover over here at generated files I can see all of them there there's a horrible thing here now my files are going to be named armature idle blah 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 armature idle arm imagine me exporting a few characters and they're all called armature something now that's pretty lame why not since this is Viking this is a Viking I want to call him Vic so I'm going to actually rename the top node the armature to Vic and by renaming it because I'm going to save it if I go back to file export um, and images now we see all the animations custom let me select I'll do all and then I'm going to remove that one yeah they're all going to be named properly Vic so if I if I had another character called Bob or Mary or whatever I can tell whose idle animation which one belongs to which one and not have to go through the images now let's say I exported this at scale 100% but what is 100 I don't know exactly what my size is and what does this mean here what is image constraints what is minimum image area what is canvas area what is custom we have to have a look at these I want to show one uh, first of all what is canvas area now how do I show this there's a button here on the side on properties called canvas let me select it oh and what you can see now is a little square has appeared that is exactly what's going to be exported rendered whatever's in this box so right now it's going to be half a Viking on the top side and we don't care there's a little um, button here that says fit to the minimum animation area so what Dragoman is going to do is going to play all the animations and see what is the best canvas area it could come up with to include every animation let's have a look there we go we can see it's put the Viking in and left some some you know empty space here now why could that be I imagine you all know because if we go with idle well it's not used but if we go with um idle sword attack there we go that's why it needs a space or walk attack now every animation is included in this and it's going to export every frame is going to be exactly the same size but we can also go and alter it I can change the width of it the height and the positioning so maybe I want it to be a bit more closer or like this let's have a look does everything fit in here that's okay sword attack oh there you go so pretty fit to minimum animation area is pretty good because it sort of works out the biggest animation you have the biggest meaning the one that occupies the most space on screen and creates a bounding box and now we have a a template for all our frames to be rendered in let's go back now and I'm going to save it again so if I go now to file export and let's go to image we're going to work with first we're going to export just frames so sequence frames PNG current I'm doing 30 frames a second because that's what I worked on uh, minimum image area no I want you to do the canvas area we have chosen see the same numbers here are there the output scale is now 100% let's stop for a moment I'm going to go to Photoshop and show you guys something when I designed the little Viking I worked at a resolution for his size double HD now what does that mean image image size this little Viking come on this little Viking image image size the whole thing takes up 940 pixels by 940 pixels but let's say I was intending to use this in a just a little animation for HD somewhere like this little area where this this little background is 1920 by 1080 this is just classic AD uh, HD if I move the Viking over and I just quickly just put him in a little group um, call it V for Vic and push him over you go back 
we can see like mm, he's quite a giant and if I scale him down scale him down and scale let's say 50% 50 that's the size I really wanted so what I'm trying to say here I want to export his frame sequences exactly at 50% and then use him here and make him you know walk across the screen and do whatever he wants to there's um I could have exported it from the beginning at 50%, but maybe at some point I want to zoom in and I don't want to lose um, resolution or something. So it depends how you, you, you need to know exactly from the beginning. You have to be, um, have full, you know, the full picture of where your animation is going to play, if they're going to zoom in, zoom out or not. So you know to prepare your assets at the best size resolution for the project. I'm not going to zoom in at all, do anything like that. So why not just export them at the size to work here? How do I do that? I know that I worked on the Viking. I had imported it and this is pretty big. You can see like it's going to take up how much space. And all I need to do is bring it down by 50%. So I'm going to go to file, export, and I got everything right, right here, blah, blah, blah. Um, no, this is the one image. I want all animations, as I said, I'm going to just take off this one, remove this one, 30 frames. I want to do the canvas area and I want it to be down to 50% transparent. I'm going to select the folder and now I've prepared one export frames using the canvas. I'm going to put them in here. So yeah, select that folder. Um, we've got the name right called Vic. Mm -hmm. And everything should go fine if I press finish. So. Let's see, it's now preparing all the frames. It's rendering one by one and naming them and putting them in a folder. Did it do it? Let me check. And here we go. Here is every little frame for every sequence. So we have Vic Idol 0 from 0, 0 all the way to 30 and armed. They're all in here, every sequence. So we're now in Photoshop. And what I want to do is now import the animated frames we just exported into this scene here all right so how i'm going to do it i'm going to windows timeline create timeline here we go for those of you who have used photoshop just do you know simple animations i'll make sure it's at 30 frames a second that's good and the way we do it is quickly i, I shouldn't be doing this because this is a drag event tutorial but i'm just going to import maybe one of the animations and put it in so maybe it goes to layer um, video layer, new layer from file, and I'm going to import just a, a basic walk. Where are you? There you are. And the thing is, like, you only have to hit one of the images of the whole sequence, and it's going to bring in the whole sequence in one go. There we go. Just to put it in place. Mm -hmm. And all I want to do is have it there at that time and move it there. And here we go. And we have a little Viking walking. No, it's not amazing, but sliding too much. So what we can do, oh, I hate when Photoshop does that. Go back. There you go. Um, zoom in. So maybe I go to the last frame and move, sorry, move you a bit back. There you go. Let's see now. And there we are. We slightly have a little Viking walking environment. That's how simple it is. Nothing special. Um, maybe I'll do another series on editing in Photoshop or using the timeline or DaVinci Resolve if people would like to see things like that. But this is a Dragon Bones tutorial. So let's go back to Dragon Bones. So we saw how it works, how you get the sequences in. Let me just import one more. And you can continue doing this like file um, layer. Um, import and, and if I click on just idle idle comes in blah 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 you can set it in whatever you want to get it right so where um the, you know where the little viking stops you know the idle has to be exactly in that spot get it right or you can bring them in together and start making a little movie you get the picture but it works since we the, the one thing we had to focus on is having sure we've named everything right we know what it is we get the um timing right since we animated at 30 frames per second we're preparing to also use any sort of editing video package at 30 frames per second and make sure we have the proper resolution 
now the Viking is at proper resolution for this size video. Back to Dragon Bones. Let's say now we want to export these to a video game like Unity. Now, we're not going to go into Unity and learn how to use Unity. What we're going to do is just, I'm just going to export the JSON files, show you what files get exported, and I'm just going to test it to see that it's imported in Unity and how all the animations are in place. So file, export, and go to the first one. I want to use a JSON. Yes, I want the last version, of course. I want to use a texture atlas map, this, this thing here. That's light, that's nice. I want to keep it at 100% because it's in a game, we might want to actually zoom in and out. So, I'm gonna, so by keeping keeping it bigger, if the camera moves in close to it, close to it not, we're not gonna lose uh, quality resolution, you know, um, quality of the picture. We're not gonna have it pixelized, pixelating. Transparent specific folder. I'm gonna browse and go back to another one I named Jason. There we go. I want you to go there. Thank you. Um, project name is Vic. And it exports three files. One's going to be the PNG image, which is this texture map. One's going to be a JSON file. Um, and another text file, something that has to do with code, that has all the information, maybe. I don't know. But I'm going to press Finish. Successful. Now, let me see if I have it ready to show you guys. I'm going to get um, Unity running. And from it's on my other screen. And bring it in. Let me just put this on until that happens. Um, mm hmm Hang in there, it's loading. Come on, Unity, open up. I just need to show people that it works. I'm gonna update you later. All right, so let me just bring Unity over. And now I'm in Unity. Mm-hmm. There it is. And I've also added the, there's a little plugin from Dragon Bones you can use in Unity. I've already done that, I've set it up, but here we go. It, cre it, it gives me, it creates a little panel here where now, let me turn this, um, none. So here it is. Here's our little text, um, skeleton, uh, three files, here they are. It's all here, blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, I can see now, I'm just gonna test, again, I'm not gonna do a tutorial of using, animating in Unity, that's a, that's a different series. I might do another one on that. Um, what we can see is, by working on external program, outside of Unity, which is just based so we can focus on animation, we can, as animators or artists, just hand over to a game developer the files only needed, those three files we exported, only these three files, and say everything is there. And we can see, it is. There's the Viking. I'm gonna turn animation, I'm gonna get to idle, it works. And if I, was, if I was smart enough, I would have actually removed from the animation list this thing called animation, animation zero, because maybe the program, the game get, what is this? Where do I have to use this? So now the only thing the game has to do, the game developer, the programmer, is assign which button on the keyboard or the gamepad triggers which animation. So maybe when you're not doing nothing, it's always idle. When you press the X button, you know, it walks, or when you move the, the stick, or when you press it arms. Everything is there and working. We're just testing everything now. Yep, so draw. It's there, sheath, we can even change the speed as we did in um, Dragon Moons on previous videos. Um, attack and walk. So there you go. We now know, I just want to show that how easy it is, like I exported three files, I hand them over to a game developer and go, use them in your engine. And because there, I didn't scale it down, there's enough information to zoom in before the art, you know, sort of starts pixelating. So it can definitely, Imagine having this a little adventure game with a Viking, um, usually running at HD, whatever. But if you zoom in or, you know, 100, 200% like goes, oh, what is that? There's enough information for it to not, not go blurry. So that's when, maybe when you want to keep, um, create your art assets for a video game at double the size to give freedom to the game designer to also be able to zoom in if he needs to the character without losing picture quality. That's where, that's where we need it. I'm gonna go back to Dragon Bones. So, we, the hard part is doing cool animations. Then you just have to be careful when you're exporting. Where are you exporting for? Is it a video? Do I need to have a specific frame? Is it the proper size? Do I need to scale it down by 50% or not? Do I have to name everything properly? Is it um, 
for a game. So just file, export, very simple. Make sure you have your folders nicely done. Make sure you have, you know, you choose Atlas map or not. Um, actually, it's very easy for a game, but the one for usually from frames, you make sure you have PNG, you have it like get the frame rate right, which animation do you want to do? Make sure are you using an image air, minimum or canvas or custom? You do your own one in. Canvas works very nice because you control exactly what the frame is and all the frames that are exactly the same. Um, transparent folders and then hand them off. And if you have multiple characters you're working on, don't work on the default having armature up here. Just um, name everything based on the character you're working on. So I'm using Vic now and so on if I have other characters. Just name them properly. Hope you enjoyed this little video. It's a bit, it was a bit more technical, not much, but on the, um, I'll see you in the next one where we're going to animate an organic hand, not a mechanic arm, arm where we're going to be first time looking at uh, mesh deformation. All right, see you next video. Bye-bye.